So this is now my simulation model of my class D amplifier. Um, started as transient simulation inside LT Spice, but at first I want to give you a short introduction of about the different blocks and how it is working. So here on the left side I have my power input. This is a 24 volts power input supply I have modeled here now. I have my audio input source, which is just a 10 kilohertz signal. I have some helping supply, uh, which are normally derived directly from the 24 volt supply. But in this case, I just have here directly some voltage sources. Then I have here the, yeah, let's say overall control loop structure. This is the um, input um, op amp. This is the error amplifier. This is the comparator circuitry. I have here my sawtooth generator, and this here is a reference offset voltage, uh, which is generated here. And then I have here my power stages. Those are two half bridges. Here are the gate drivers, here are the power MOSFETs. I have here a difference amplifier, which is sensing the audio signal between the output of the two half bridges differentially. And here's my output LC filter. But now let's have a look more in detail what's going on here. Here at the input I have a 24 volts power input supply and I modeled this with a series resistance of 500 milliohms. And I think this is also quite typical value for a cable with a couple of meters length. And this is buffered then here on the circuitry with 470 microfarad. We can also have a look here on the supply so we see it's quite stable. Then we have here the audio input source. I just used here a 10 kilohertz audio signal, but the audio signal here is uh, starting after 200 microseconds because at first I want to get my circuitry getting stable and then starting uh, with the um, transient simulation with applying a 10 kilohertz signal. The amplitude as you can see is plus minus 500 millivolts. Here I have my helper supply. This is just a 12 volt supply and here just a five volt supply. And yeah, this is actually all we need um, as input for our circuitry. So then maybe let's have a look to the main control loop. Here in the um, lower um, left edge, you can see here now my sawtooth generator circuitry, um, which is actually needed for the comparator in the end to compare the error signal against the sawtooth. And this actually generates in the PWM output signal. Um, let me explain a little bit how this is working. So here at the input, I will use a microcontroller. This is a 3.3 .3 volt signal with 300 kilohertz. I chose now as main switching frequency for the amplifier. And yeah, actually all 3.3 .3 microseconds, a short pulse of a 100 nanoseconds here is applied. The current which is drawn out of the mic controller pin is here limited over 200 ohms per resistor to a maximum current of 12, yeah, plus minus 12 milliamps. So this can be actually directly connected to mic controller pin. And then we have here actually our main sort of generator circuitry. The idea is basically that we have here an RC circuit and this capacitor is slowly charged over that 10 kilo ohms resistor here from our main uh, 24 volt supply. And then every 3.3 3 microseconds actually the MOSFET here is activated and will unload the capacitor to ground over this diode here. So if we put the signal here in comparison with the MOSFET control signal, you can see every time the MOSFET is switched off, the capacitor is loaded. And as soon as the MOSFET is switched on, the capacitor is unloaded. But you might wonder now why here is a small diode. The reason is actually quite easy because um, I said the sort of waveform is um, compared on the output generator against the error signal from the error amplifier. And the error amplifier should be at least able to also swing below this sort of waveform and also swing above the sort of waveform so that the amplifier is able to produce a 100% duty cycle signal, but also a 0% uh, duty cycle signal. Then I have here my 12 volts offset. Um, the reason behind why we are needing a 12 volts uh, reference voltage is that our complete circuitry is uh, um, supplied by only a single 24 volt supply. 
And everyone who had already a closer look into audio amplifiers uh, will know usually that most audio amplifiers are working with a symmetrical power supply that you have maybe like plus 24 volts and minus 24 volts. But we want to supply everything out of a single supply, so not symmetrical. And therefore, we need to bias all internal signals to, let's say, half of the um, operating voltage. And this is uh, done quite easily. We have just here a voltage divider to uh, two times a 10 kilo ohms resistor and here a little buffering resistor. And then uh, this is just the voltage follower circuitry. And then we have here um, actually a just a 12 volt reference voltage. In case you are wondering now why we are just using exactly this op amp here, which is shown here, the solution is quite easy. I just had a look into Mauser and I was searching just for the cheapest op amp, which is able to work at the 24 volt supply. If I remember correctly, this op amp here can now even work up to 36 volt, the total voltage difference, and it has a gain bandwidth product of a couple of megahertz but this is definitely enough for our class D amplifier here. So then let's have a look to the main control loop circuitry. Um, I'm coming here with my input signal and this here is actually my termination resistor of 10 kilo ohms uh, for the uh, yeah, signal input cable later on. And I have here a coupling capacitor because here we have just a pure AC signal which is swinging as you can see here around the zero point to plus of 500 millivolts and minus 500 millivolts. And here we are applying now our uh, 12 volts DC offset where we need the VREF offset voltage. So here we have actually an inverting amplifier, uh, which just has a gain of one, so not very complex. And we are just applying here at the positive input, the 12 volts um, uh, reference voltage and then the op amp will regulate in a way that it will also see the 12 volts then at the negative input here and what we have at the output then is just our um, plus minus 500 millivolts input signal but here with a dc offset of 12 volts but actually the signal uh, stays uh, exactly the same here you can also check it here and you see we have difference voltage of exactly one volt so this is working already quite good then we have here our main error amplifier so here we also applying here once again our 12 volts offset voltage and here at this i call it error summing node actually our audio signal is summed up with the feedback signal from our difference amplifier which is sensing differentially the output voltage on the power half bridges and also we have here a loop compensation the loop compensation actually is just needed to get our loop stable later on and it will limit a little bit um, the open loop gain in the uh, higher frequency ranges so that amplifier will not start ringing or so but uh, how we select the correct values of this capacitor and this resistor I will show you um, on the next chapter then. Yeah, um, with those resistors, we can also select the um, voltage gain of our uh, amplifier. I just decided to make the amplifier now to 30 dB voltage gain, which is actually in linear scale, something like uh, 33. And this is just uh, then, or you can just set the voltage gain then by R23 divided by R22. And then we also have to consider our gain of the difference amplifier, which is just 0 0.1. And therefore we get here with a 10K and 0 0.3K actually the voltage gain, uh, which is uh, 32. So here we have our error output amplifier and here we have our sort of waveform. And this is actually now our comparator. There I just used the standard LM339. I think this device is uh, quite now. Here we can have a look how the sort of waveform actually um, looks once again. And this is our error signal. Let's have a look in, at another place. And this is just the output. Here we can also have a look how the comparator circuitry behaves. In case now the scene wave is applied, you see the error signal swing around with 10 kilohertz. And then here the PWM is actually modulated. 
the optic signal here we have like a small duty cycle here a higher duty cycle then you get actually the energy of the scene wave here to the signal now let's have a look to the power stages um, i decided for lm5906 uh, gate driver the reason why i chose this gate driver was that it has an integrated dead time circuitry and this is quite important because we don't want to have a shoot through here um, on the power mosfets and you just connect here a resistor to ground and uh, via the value you will set here to this resistor you will determine in the end the um, that time between the two mosfets and here we're just coming in with our pwm signal to the um, gate driver and then it will just switch on and switch off the high set and the low set MOSFET accordingly that we have then the same signal here um, on the output. So this gate driver here is a bootstrapping concept, therefore we are needing this diode here and this capacitor. But in case you don't know what a bootstrapping concept is, please have a look to Google because I think there are enough explanations here on the internet. And yeah, you see, then we are just having here the same output signal as the input signal. And the same PWM signal, but only one time inverted, is uh, um, applied to another gate driver. It's actually exactly one by one the same circuitry as here above. And those two amplifiers are actually switching differentially then. So here we have our difference amplifier. Uh, we are getting our um, two signals from the, uh, yeah, let's say middle point of the two MOSFETs here into the, into the difference amplifier. And at first we have here a yeah, small RC filter circuitry because we have a lot of common mode voltage bouncing between zero volts and 24 volts. And this RC, filter circuitry it's filtering a little bit the um, voltage so that we don't have that high common mode jumps anymore and then we are just having here 100k 100k 10k 10k configuration that we are actually uh, having a gain of uh, 0.1 of the difference input to the output here and also at this point I have to apply once again the um, uh, reference offset voltage that my output here is also biased at 12 volts. And here we are having once again a 47 picofarad capacitor to obtain here the loop stability for this difference amplifier. But I will also show you in the next chapter how to obtain this value here. Yeah, and this the output from our difference um, amplifier here, I can also show you, as I said, is biased at 12 volts and uh, will actually give you the difference of this signal here multiplied by 0 0.1. And this signal will be fed here then to this point where it is actually summed up with our original audio signal. Here we are having now our output LC filter this is just um, this here is just our main inductor which is a 33 micro henrys and our capacitor of one micro farad and here we are having once again additional resistance capacitor for the damping here of the lc filter circuitry and this is our 8 ohm speaker load and it is uh, connected differentially between the two output bridges here in case we are clicking here on those signals, you will see that we are having actually here our 10 kilohertz signal, which is uh, yeah, also biased here around 12 volts. But it doesn't care that here and here is like a bias of 12 volts because the speaker is in the end um, connected differentially, and therefore we'll only see the AC signal. And here I have just the monitoring circuitry. This is actually not on the real board um, later on but uh, it will show you what the speaker is actually seeing as the difference or as the differential voltage. Yeah, and this is just uh, um, our input signal. We have applied our 10 kilohertz signal, which is swinging around the zero volts point. So it is actually an AC signal and is um, amplified actually by roughly a uh, multiplication of 30. If you are wondering now um, about the ripple, we can see here on the sine wave and maybe that you think it's looking a little bit dirty, 
I can tell you that this is normal in a class D amplifier because our LC filter is only damping like 40 or 50 dB or so at the switching frequency. So we'll always see this ripple. But as you can see, the ripple is like 300 kilohertz. So you will not hear it in the end on the real speaker. For the output filter of the Glass D amplifier, there are only actually like two real hard requirements. One requirement is that all the audio signals up to 20 kilohertz are able to pass here the filter. And on the other hand, the output filter should cancel as good as possible all the high frequency from the PWM. So therefore, um, I decided to make here an AC simulation of the 33 microhenry um, inductor and the one microfarad capacitor. And um, I just did an AC simulation with one volt amplitude and now let's have a look what's happening here. So I press run and you see that all the frequency response up to let's say 20 kilohertz is flat. And then we have an extremely overshoot, which is the resonance frequency here of the 33 microhenries inductor and one microfarad capacitor. And then um, actually it starts damping. But we don't want to have that overshoot in our real filter then in the end. And we also have to, uh, or we also have to need to look what's happening if you connect the load here. Now I will cut here the trays of our damping filter here. This is just a 10 microfarads capacitor. This can be really any cheap electrolytic capacitor and a 10 ohms resistor. And I will connect this to the output of the filter. And now you see that the filter is already uh, quite good damped here at this point. If I have a look now on the frequency response, I will see that I have my minus three dB point at roughly 40 kilohertz. And at the main switching frequency, 300 kilohertz, the filter is damping like uh, 41 dB. And if I connect my load here once again, in this case, I just took a four ohms resistor. Then you will see that it is even damping a little bit better at uh, 20 kilohertz. And this is uh, the uh, maximum upper uh, frequency of the audio amplifier. I have around about minus three dB. This is actually fine. So before we can start with the AC simulation, we have to look up some values in uh, our transient simulation because one time for our AC model, we need uh, one time the uh, um, propagation delay time of our comparator here. And also we need the propagation delay time of our gate driver. And therefore we're just having a look here now. This is our sawtooth waveform and this is our error signal. And then we are just watching here the uh, PWM output signal. And as you can see, our comparator is not switching directly. When it should switch, it will also always have a small delay. And here you will see the ramp is going over our error amplifier output signal. And then actually the PWM output uh, goes high after a couple of nanoseconds. But we need this time here for our next simulation. And you will see here in the lower left edge that we have roughly 380 nanoseconds propagation delay time here on the comparator. And then we also need once again the um, propagation delay of the gate driver. And uh, with this I mean here when we're applying a PWM input signal here to the input, then you will see actually the same output waveform here on the output between the MOSFETs. And there of course we're also having a delay because until the MOSFET here is switched on, it will need to charge the gate and so on. And also the MOSFET is then actually introducing a delay into the circuitry. And this can be measured here between the input signal and when we will see the output rising high. And there you can see we have like 200 nanoseconds. This is now the abstracted small signal model of our class D amplifier schematic we just have seen in the transient simulation. Actually, a small signal simulation model is not really to simulate it on transient behavior. It is just really an abstraction how it behaves in AC domain. 
So, or therefore, there are also some changes, for example, that I have now a symmetrical power supply, which is referenced here to this grounding point. And uh, all my op amps here are also referenced to ground and supplied by the symmetrical power supply here. Um, what is maybe now a little bit interesting that you see that the um, audio input source is not shown here. And this is because actually the audio source itself is not part of the loop. The main error amplifier of the loop or which controls the loop is just regulating here the negative input to the same voltage as the positive uh, input here. So if you put in an audio signal, it is more or less just something like a distortion of the overall control loop and the error amplifier will regulate out this distortion. But the good positive side effect of this all is that you have then in the end your audio signal on the output of the power stages. But from a loop point of view, it is not the main purpose, let's say. So what do we have here? We have here our error amplifier with here our feedback compensation resistor and capacitor. And then we have something quite interesting here because in our real circuit, we have here like a triangle wave generator, we have here a comparator, we have here a power stage, which is a gate driver plus some power MOSFETs. But the problem is you cannot simulate something like this in a, let's say, linear small signal model. So we have to abstract everything, which is like comparator, triangle wave and power output stage to some linear model, which is shown here. So basically we have here only an amplification device um, where it just has a gain. So if I put one volts here, it will just amplify to 8.3 volts in this case. But how do I come to this value of 8.3? So at first we need to know what is our sawtooth voltage from peak to peak. And I just looked it up in the transient simulation. This was around about 5.8 volts. And then we need to know what is the supply of our power bridges. This is 24 volts. And as we have actually a full bridge configuration, not only a half bridge configuration, we have to multiply the gain by two. So in the end, we got like 24 volts divided by 5.8 volts, uh, multiplied by two is 803. So we know now that everything which is consisting out of comparator and power stage has actually in the small signal range a gain of 803. But the overall gain is not everything. We also have to consider a delay which is introduced by our power stage. Typically, you would only model here this with a, um, with a time delay um, device here, but unfortunately, I didn't found this in LTSPICE. So I just used uh, this uh, transmission line here, which has a typical impedance of 50 ohms and which is also terminated with 50 ohms. And the only um, interesting thing now is actually the delay time I can set here. How can we calculate the delay time? This is actually just the delay of the comparator, the delay of the power stages, plus a half of one switching period. So delay comparator, I just measured was 380 nanoseconds plus the delay of the power stage is like 200 nanoseconds. And then uh, uh, you just typically say, this is a statistical value, just the half of one period, which is 1.67 microseconds. So we have an overall delay of a 2.25 microseconds. And this is then feedbacked as in the real loop um, to the difference amplifier. So one time the original signal, one time the inverted signal. This goes through difference amplifier. And then the output of the difference amplifier is set to our uh, error amplifier once again. But now the interesting thing is, um, if you want to see what is the open loop gain and the phase, somewhere we have to cut that loop. And typically you do this at this point where the main feedback is given back to the error amplifier. In this case, this is the output of our difference amplifier. So I just cut it here and I put in here a voltage a source, which is actually configured to AC with 100 millivolts. So now let's see what the simulation is doing. So I can now have a look on here and on here, but you actually cannot do anything with this. So we put now here a new trace, which is actually the diff and output voltage divided by the main feedback voltage. And then you see that we actually don't get any voltage or so, we just get a typical border plot where you have a gain on the left side and a phase on the right side. And we just want to know what is actually now our zero dB point and how much phase do we still have. So at first, let's have a look on the DC point, which is here modeled at one hertz. 
So we see our phase starts at minus 90 degree and we have an open loop gain of 87 dBs at this point. And now let's have a look where our zero dB point is. Yeah, this is uh, roughly at 75 kilohertz and to minus 108 degrees, we have around about 30 degree. So actually we have now our zero dB point at 75 kilohertz with 30 degree phase margin, and this is fine. But in case you want to change this, for example, then you just typically go to your compensation circuit and you can just uh, set another value, for example, 10K, and then press simulate once again and you will see that this border plot will change. So we have now our new zero dB point at yeah, roughly 25 kilohertz and still have a phase margin of 70 degree. But for our class amplifier, we don't need that much phase margin actually. And also the zero dB point is really, really close to the audible frequency. So we don't have that much open loop gain in our audible range. But of course we want to have as much as possible open loop gain within our audible range. So we have to set the zero dB point as high as possible, but at the same time we need enough phase margin. So I think here our solution for nanofarad and 30 kilo ohms with zero dB at 75 kilohertz is actually quite a good solution for this. Yeah, I hope you also liked my video this time, even if it was a little bit longer. Um, if you have any further questions, just leave me a comment or send me a message. And then I would say see you next time for 